Soviet tanks are known for their protection, but at the higher tiers a lot of tanks are using more advanced heat shells that penetrate significantly thicker armor, and hash that don't care about how angled armor plates are. And you might think, this is the end of Soviets. Though medium tank T4400 proves that a little upgrade is enough to keep similar effectiveness even at high tiers. Tank's most noticeable difference is its hull. It has a spaced armor that almost completely covers vehicle sides. And most importantly, that spaced armor is introduced at the right time in the right place. At such battle ratings where you will meet later tanks, majority of which will use newer projectiles. Has shells are affected the most, they will be activated by spaced armor. They still can destroy your tracks, but the shell won't be able to damage anything inside. Heat shells, which will be one of the most common things that can hit you, are a little bit trickier. They will be activated early as well and will lose penetration while jet travels through empty space, but that is not enough to avoid damage. Side armor is 75mm thick, when you add 6mm plate and some air in between, that almost doubles the protection against this kind of projectile. And yet it's not enough since most heat can penetrate over 300mm, though battlefield is not the comfortable conditions of hangar. Attackers often forced to attack you from bad positions, in a rush, they must attack the part that is not covered by other objects, and so on. Finally, you can help yourself by intentionally angling your tank. And when heat shell hits your sights under an angle, that's when magic happens. This way it has to pass more air and armor, reaching values exceeding the penetration. On the other hand, armor-piercing projectiles will not be affected by space armor and additional 6mm plate on its way will barely help you. That's why your frontal plate is 90mm thick, rolled homogeneous armor angled at 60 degrees. Basically it's unpenetratable for any full caliber shell, especially with high explosive filler. Instead, subcaliber, heat and hash shells will have no problems with your frontal armor. This way, depending on what kind of opponent you are facing and what shells they are more likely to use, you can tank either with your side or front. In theory, that can allow you to adjust the situation to maximize protection against specific enemy. Though in reality, it's quite difficult to perform that and usually space armor serves as a nice bonus against heat that helps randomly. The bad thing about space armor, it doesn't help you in any way when your turret gets hit. This is your weak spot no matter what kind of projectile is used. A huge area of turret has little to no angles. Additionally, turret is hard to hide because as usual it's placed on top of the tank. The only good thing is that as long as turrets are made smaller than hulls, they are more difficult to hit. So on bigger maps you can survive more hits as distance will not allow your opponents to hit you accurately. That is important since 3 out of 4 comrades in your tank are placed at your weak spot. It doesn't take a lot of research to find out what happens when someone shoots your turret. At these tiers, rarely, but you will start to meet tanks using rockets, which will have penetration values over 400mm. And then it doesn't matter where it hits and what are the angles, it will go through your armor, spaced armor and your crew, no matter what. But everything that can penetrate you easily has a small post-penetration effect, while you, as a proper Soviet tank, will be using proper Soviet ammunition. Your most penetrating KPHE shell can go through over 200mm of armor. Just like others attacking you with similar shells, you will also have to look for weak spots. But thanks to almost 100 grams of TNT equivalent of explosives inside your projectile, most of your shots should instantly destroy enemy's vehicle. You won't need to take any other type of available shells, maybe except of smoke shell. 
Two more APHEs have few grams more explosives, that barely makes any difference, but less penetration. APCR gives only around 10 mm of additional penetration and only at close ranges. And instead of using high explosive to deal with soft targets, you have small and big caliber machine guns. And the armor piercing bullet is even able to penetrate up to 20 mm at 1 km range. Ability to have some protection against advanced ammunition types has the price of having a little bit less maneuverability among similar tanks. Despite maximum speed is 60, average speed is around 35 km per hour. Reversing is 9 kph, which both at the same time are a bit slow and not very different from other similar vehicles. Smokescreen doesn't have many uses, it's two barrels that can be dropped behind your tank. Since usually enemies are in front of you, you won't use that often. Out of more noticeable disadvantages, it's gun's depression, which is only minus 3 degrees. That is bad even for Soviets. And probably the worst of them all, reload speed, 10.5 seconds. You will only face some heavy tanks that will shoot slower. But in general, you can expect enemy to reload faster than you. That puts you in disadvantage if you missed your shot. In arcade, your advantage lays in ability to one-shot. While others can struggle with the damage of their heat, you are in advantageous position when trading shots. Though people realize that APHE damage means a lot in this game mode, so expect to play against a lot of Soviet and German tanks. That turns the gameplay into who gets to hit the weak spot first. To be fair, you can relatively safely peek out because frontal armor will let you resist few hits, but just as long as someone hits your turret. That leaves you only the speed advantage, as now you can reach your high maximum speed, but that mostly useful to capture point at the beginning, as the rest of the match everyone hides behind cover anyway, and peeks out time to time just to make shot and get back to cover. Overall, T4400 feels like it tries to keep up with changing reality in a simplest possible way. Spaced armor is very nice addition that helps with survivability, but the fact that tank steps into an era of heat ammunition with huge penetrations means that everyone who used to depend on thick steel plates can no longer be sure about their armor. If usually players had to look for weak spots in Soviet tanks, with heat shells they can penetrate them almost anywhere they want. So armor starts to lose its value while vehicles with a lot of space and crew in sight start to slowly gain advantage. Yet 7.0 is a transfer point where most ammunition types are present and 4400 is one of few tanks that can offer some protection against every type of projectile. I will rate the vehicle 6 space between armor out of 10. An overall good tank that still can deliver famous Soviet APHE damage, but now a little bit less confidence in protection.